Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, or medical well-being. And now, the best of Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. How is everyone this evening? I have a most fabulous, fabulous show and a guest tonight. My guest tonight is Dr. Rita Louise, and she's written a book called Avoiding the Cosmic 2 by 4 and this is going to be approved to be a very interesting evening because Dr. Rita is going to be here talking to us about energy and how energy affects us uh, subtly in our lives. And she is on the line with us. We're going to get with her in just a moment. But as I do each and every week, I want to thank my um, sponsor, Fate Magazine. For those of you who have heard about Fate Magazine, that's wonderful. They surely appreciate that. But for those of you who have not, please go to their website, and that's www.fatemag.com. You know, um, right now in the world, we have so much going on, as is uh, on my website each and every week. I try to update that in the Journeys News. So for those of you who are out there listening, you can go to journeyswithrebecca.com. When you log on, you will see in the center of the, of the website a place that's called um, our, My Journeys News. There's where you're going to get the latest updates um, as to what's new and, and all the events happening around the Journeys family. But more importantly, as we were talking about earlier, is our world news. There is so much that goes on, and I only have so much room on the front page to put it on. I have other pages on my website that you can go and follow up on different things that is going on in the world. Um, but we try to bring you the latest and, and greatest news, and that which we think is most significant every week. So it is updated every week uh, for your um, education and information. And I also want to direct your attention to um, my journey store. I do have some new items there for those of you who are interested. Also, some new meditation CDs, and there will be another one coming out in April of 2005. Um, and lest I forget, thank you to Organic Health and Beauty, another one of my sponsors for Journey Perspective. We appreciate them so much. Um, as I stated earlier, the um, energies in the world, the world right now are just absolutely copy-turvy. I think most of you just going to work day by day um, and just really looking at the people that you work with and the people that you might interact, you're going to be noticing a lot of changes. Um, around people, you know, the Earth's activities in and of themselves as far as uh, volcanoes and earthquakes and, you know, the tsunami that was so recent. There's just so much activity that it affects us. It affects us on a, on a level that's very significant, whether we're aware of it or not. And um, we're here tonight with Dr. Rita Louise to kind of talk about energy. So we're going to tie all that in together with what's going on in the world today. Because I'll tell you, any information that we can get, anything that we can use to make our lives more peaceful, more mellow, and more... At, at sense of harmony within self is the most important thing I think we can do for ourselves in this day and age. So let me welcome her to the show, Dr. Rita Louise. Good evening. Hi, Miss Rebecca. How are you? You know what? I am wonderful. I'm stupendous. Great. You can say that, right? You can say that. Uh, yes, I would say that. I would say that because it's true, you know? I think for me, Dr. Louise, I have my moments in my days, you know, where there's some moments are not good. But overall, I think my days are pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty thankful to be here. <laughs> well, I'm very thankful to be here, too. Oh, good. <laughs> well, you know what? You, you have written... Oh, well, we'll be right back. We'll just talk about your book, Avoiding the Cosmic Two by Four. Don't go away. 
Schedule your private psychic reading with Rebecca, a truly gifted, intuitive, and clairvoyant, and the host of Journeys with Rebecca radio show. Call 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Where will your life's journey take you? We are here with Dr. Rita Louise, and we are we just got Gavin and just wasn't paying any attention. Avoiding the cosmic two by four, Rita Louise PhD. All right, let's talk a little bit, Dr. Louise, about and you know while I was mentioning my website, they can actually go on my website right now and see a picture of you. I think that visual is kind of nice to know who's talking. Uh-huh. You know, you kind of put a face uh-huh. with with the uh, voice and the information. I think that's very very important. So she, your your face is right there on my website. I love it. Um, oh. You've got a pretty face, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about your book, The Cosmic 2x4. Okay. 2x4. Did I say that right? It's 2x4. You it's, know, like it's, the, it's the ultimate whack up the side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There I mean, you go. If you think about it, when people get sick and they experience a, a disease like diabetes or cancer or uh, MS or something like that, it, their body is trying to get their attention, and it's the universe's way of getting your attention because it probably has been trying for years and years and years to get you to make some changes in your life. And since you didn't, it is giving you the cosmic two by four and saying, hey, you need to do something now. Well, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Dr. Rita, because one of the things that I've said through the years is that I believe that a um, disease or sickness or illness, the manifestation on it, for the most part, I'm not going to say 100%, but for the most part, is due to other circumstances besides the sickness and the illness. The sickness and the illness is just a manifestation of what's really causing that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, our body holds so much, you know, not only of this lifetime, but we carry some stuff in with us, too. That's right. You know, and so we're dealing with that, and a lot of us don't even recognize that. Um, you know, I see people with chronic injuries and chronic pain and, you know, chronic ailments, mm-hmm. and they really have nothing to do with this lifetime whatsoever. Exactly. And so it just this just kind of accentuates, you know, being here not not addressing the issue doesn't make their life easier. I mean, one of the things that I have found through my work working as a medical intuitive is that there are three different ways people get sick. One is it's they they have an accident, they break their leg, you know, they you know bump into something, you know, accidental, and not getting into the whole implication of you know what that actually means in your life. But, exactly. You know, if you get in a car accident and you get whiplash, I mean, it's accidental. Another one would be environmental slash bacterial. You know, you eat a lot of toxic foods. You live in a polluted environment. You work around a lot of, you know, chemicals and stuff like that. It's like that is another way that your body can get sick. But the third is the energetic. You know, it has to do with that mind-body relationship. And a lot of people don't really recognize how much their body is trying to tell them and they just don't pay attention. Well, I, 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 think, I think even more so than that or even over and above that or combined with that is that they're still trying to treat the symptoms and not the cause. Like if you have a constant headache, you're taking, you know, aspirin or Tylenol or ibuprofen, whatever it is, but you're not really getting to the root of it. That's right. And so a lot of people don't look at it that it could be their environment um, or it could be something entirely different, which is an energetic thing, mm-hmm. you know, because obviously a headache is not normally is caused by, you know, an accident unless it's an accident that they are aware of that they had that sustained an injury. Correct. So now let's let's go a little bit more in your book. First of all, I want to kind of break down the book because we've got some specific questions that I want to ha- I want you to answer for the audience. But what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about you. You put this into different sections. First of all, I want to tell you that I thought that that was. Um, it, the way that you laid out the book was absolutely perfect because it, it takes somebody from the beginning, simplistic information, and then you start building on that information to the point where people have a whole entire viewpoint, a look, a whole new thought process if they haven't begun the journey. Mm-hmm. This book will take them from the beginning to the end and everything in the middle to talk about this very same thing that we've been discussing. One and, of the things that I figured out early in my uh, metaphysical career was that people really need to get it in their own lives. They need to get it on a body level. And that was one of the things I tried to do is using just down-to-earth examples so that people can sit there and go, oh, I do that, or okay, that's what you're saying. 
okay, you know, and it turns the light bulbs on. I mean, there's a lot of, I'm going to say, new agey kind of books out there that kind of talk to you, and you read it, and you get good brain food, but you never get them little light bulb moments. Right, you you can you can comprehend it, you you can relate to it, but you don't get the energy, if you will, that's associated with. Gee, I think I need to adopt that. I right. think I need to change it. I think I need to do something. Mm-hmm. You, you like you said, you get the brain food, but you don't get the feeling like I need to get up and go and do it. <laughs> you know. Exactly. And in your book, for somebody that needs needs this, I'm telling you, it's it's fabulous stuff. I love what you did with the illustrations in there. Um, you know, talking about chakras, people ask me a lot. Well, what are the chakras and if you can give them a visual of what energy is, although we can't necessarily see it, but we can at least give them a visual so that conceptually they understand what you're talking about, boy, does that help with, as you said, the light bulbs to come on. Uh-huh. It's great stuff. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the subtle energy. Okay. I want you to tell us what it is and what role does it play. And you have written um, some things here that says play in our own ability to experience radiant health. I love that term, radiant health. Isn't that good? I love that. That's very cool. <laughs> I mean, we are we are more than just a physical body. We are made up of actually the physical body and then four what are called subtle bodies. And the subtle bodies process different kinds of information. And actually, the way I like to describe it to people is that it's kind of like, I mean, I'm going to use a similar metaphor when we talk about the chakras, but it's like they're each at a different vibration. And and. Let me even back up. When you talk about subtle energy, in, in physics, the fastest thing known in the universe is the speed of light. And so when you're talking about subtle energy, it's like we can't see it. We can't in, interact with it because they don't really have anything to measure it with. You know, and my belief is that everything is vibrating faster than the speed of light, and so they don't really know how to interface with it. And there are the four subtle bodies, the causal body, the mental body, the emotional body, and the etheric body. And each one processes a different vibration of energy, and it, which equals a different kind of energy. And so starting the closest to the body is the etheric body. And making the assumption that our body is the densest vibration, the etheric body vibrates a little bit faster. It is the representation of the physical body. What the etheric body does is it gives form. It's the blueprint for the physical body. What's very interesting is that in people that are either sick or going to be sick, an intuitive can sit there and find that health disorder sitting in the etheric body. And so they might have something showing up in the etheric body, but it hasn't actually moved all the way into the physical body. And so, like, I had a client who, I was reading him, and I said, well, you know, there's a lot of congestion, and there's this heat sitting all around your face and around your nose area. Do you have a sinus infection? And, you know, no, 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 there's nothing going on, blah, 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 blah. And turned out, you know, it was a man, what could I say? And, uh, <laughs> no offense now. <laughs> yeah, no offense. And I was friends with his wife, and so a few weeks later, she calls me up. She goes, you know how you were sitting there talking about that stuff around his nose? She goes, the very next day, he had the worst sinus infection that didn't clear up for two weeks. Oh, my gosh. So he kind of believed me after that, and we became very good friends. Uh, (laughs) Moving out further and vibrating even faster is the emotional body. And this is where our emotions hang out. I mean, it's also called the astral body. And one of, you know, if you sit there and take the word emotions, it is energy in motion, emotion. And from a Kabbalistic perspective, it is about movement, and it's about flow. And so it is through emotions that our thoughts are transformed into things that the body can handle and deal with. And and I'm going to come back to that in a second. The next body is the mental body, and this is the land of thought. And in order for anything to be created, we have to have a thought. So that is actually the first stage in manifestation is a thought. And so if we have a thought... Are, it will trigger an emotion, or it can trigger an emotion. It doesn't always, but it can trigger an emotion, which creates a physiological response in the body. And so the example I like to use is if I sit here and say I'm holding half of a lemon in my hand and I'm just going to lift it to my lips and suck on that lemon, I'm sure that there's a number of listeners out there that their mouth is starting to water. <laughs> and the point being the thought of me sucking on a lemon created a biochemical change in their body causing saliva to start flowing in their mouth. And that's just a lemon. 
You know, so if you're in a stressful position at work or if you're in a relationship that there's just a lot of mental burden or a lot of emotional burden, think about the amount of biochemical changes that are happening in your body, good and bad. Anyway, okay. and then the final body is the causal body, and that's the soul body, and that's the space through which spirit communicates with us. And its job is to keep us whole and to lead us toward wellness, you know, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. So that's the body. And then we also are made up of seven chakras. Well, we're made up of multiple chakras, but what I talk about primarily in the book are the seven major chakras that run up and down the spine, starting at the base of the spine and then moving up to the top of the head. And those sit there and allow energy to move in between the bodies. Well, actually, each body has a chakra on it. And connecting the chakras kind of in a pipe effect are something that are called nadis. And, you know, a lot of people have seen, you know, the chakra guy, and if there's a side view, and it looks like he has these, like, funnels sticking out of the body all over the place. That's a, a nadis, and it's an energy channel. And that is what allows the energy to move between each of the bodies via the chakras into the actual physical body. So that's Energy Anatomy 101. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's very good. I want to talk a little bit about the chakras. I myself, um, um, I, I, I work on mine all the time, try to keep that. I call them keep them flowing, keeping that. You talked about the funnels, keeping those funnels moving. Mm-hmm. And uh, typically when you look at somebody uh, from a, 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 an intuitive perspective, you can, you can sense in those chakras if there's blockage from one to the other, because the point is, is to keep the chakras not only open up and down the spine, but also from front to back. That's correct. And so when we're talking about the ones going up and down, if there is a block from one to the other, and you normally see that in people that have had some kind of, a, a lot of it usually is for, it's the heart chakra or the throat chakra, um, from people that have had, you know, maybe a, a bad relationship or um, they're stuck in a bad situation, whether it be a work or a personal situation, and they can't voice their opinion because mentally they're blocked with it. And when those chakras don't align up as far as up and down, then obviously they're not going to be open from front to back either. Mm-hmm. And that allows for a person to, you know, be closed off. And that in itself can, I call it the backup, you know, can back up into the system, <laughs> in, into the physical body. And that can create all kinds of havoc with people, mm-hmm. just tons of havoc with people. So for those of you who are out there listening, the Cosmic 2x4 is going to give you a step-by-step instruction on, on those subtle energies and how they really affect us. I really was very pleased with your book. You know, I get books, like I said, I think we talked before, and, you know, I get probably a half a dozen to a dozen books a week. And uh, well, we'll be right back, though. Don't go away. We're here with Dr. Rita Louise, the boy in the Cosmic 2x4. Hey, I'm Bonnie Raitt. Remember how excited you were as a kid to go back to school at the end of the summer? Seeing old friends, making new ones, getting new books in a new locker, a clean slate. And music class, that special room where you went to sing and perform with your friends and learn all sorts of interesting stuff about great composers of instruments and different kinds of music. We remember our music teachers because they were so passionate about helping us learn to love music. They helped spark a love for listening to notes and voices and rhythms that continues to enrich our lives even today. Know what? I bet your kids feel the same way about music class. Ask them, and make sure they get involved with music in school this year. A back-to-school PSA brought to you by MENC, the National Association for Music Education, Gibson Guitar, Baldwin Piano, and this station. Music, it wires the brain for learning. Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We are here with Dr. Rita Louise. We have been talking about avoiding the cosmic 2 by 4 which can be a major step back in just about everyone's life. We've really had some really good conversation in the very first uh, segment here, Dr. Rita. Um, why, don't we, why don't we take this just a little bit step further here with our conversation? Okay. We talked during the break about thoughts and emotions and how spirit is, is talking to us to try to keep us on our path. Mm-hmm. Let's let's kind of open that whole thing up and let's chat about that for a minute. Okay. I mean, one of the things about health is that when we experience ill health, I mean, there are a lot of people that have a background or they've heard, you know, if there's an imbalance in your energy, you get sick. You know, I mean, you know, that's a very, I mean, it, to me, it's a very colloquial response, but no one really understands why. 
But the biggest thing that happens is that there's an incongruity between what spirit wants us to do and what we choose to do. <laughs> okay, don't get me laughing. <laughs> oh, do and, I know that one? And It's and huge. It's huge. It is. It's huge. You know, and so if, if you go to the refrigerator and you're thinking, I want to get, you know, you say, okay, well, what do I want to drink? And spirit says, drink some water, and you reach in and get a Pepsi, you're not being congruent with yourself. Exactly. You know, and a lot of times people will get sick because there are things that spirit is directing them to do, and they choose to not do it. And I'm going to give you an example. I had a client. Actually, I was working with a, another naturopath, and she had a client. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. And this, the naturopath did blood work analysis. And the woman's um, liver enzymes were elevated. And so she goes, you know, can you come in here and kind of look at her liver and, you know, tell me what you get? And I said, well, you know, your liver is red and it's inflamed. And there's a low-grade infection going on. And the naturopath goes, oh, that explains her elevated white blood cell count. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then I went on to say, are you married? I go, because there's stuff that you want to do and your husband isn't letting you do it and it's just pissing you off. I go, so I don't understand why you're not doing it because it's all sitting in your liver. And she looked at me and she said, well, you know, it's not my husband that's not letting me do it. I'm not doing it because I don't think he wants me to. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, her liver is red, hot, inflamed. She has elevated liver enzymes and an elevated white blood cell count. Right. You know, it took a long time to move through that. You know, and actually I had, do I have time for another quick story? Absolutely. I had a woman who came in with uterine fibroids, and they were really good size. They weren't to the bleeding point yet, which is usually when the doctors are like, we're just going to remove the uterus. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, well, you know, there's three of them. They're pretty good size. I'm, you know, they're not bleeding, or there's a little teeny bit of bleeding. You know, not too bad. And I said, you know, are you in a relationship? And she said, yeah. I go, you know, you need to dump him. <laughs> I go, because he's not meeting any of your needs. I go, you're putting out all this energy and taking on all the responsibility for the relationship, but you're not getting anything back. I go, bottom line, you're not getting anything back. And, you know, that was the session. And I saw her about a year later. She had gotten rid of the boyfriend and also got rid of the fibroids. It's so without called medical a miracle prevention. cure. Mm -hmm. Called a miracle cure. It's called a miracle cure. Yeah, but really, listening. they just became congruent with themselves. And, you know, and in hindsight, she said, you know, I had been thinking that the relationship wasn't working for me for a long time, but I just never had the nerve to do anything about it. So well, spirit when somebody say, that doesn't know her says, hey, look what's going on, and they go, well, okay. Sometimes that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. for and I, and for her, that's all it took. Yeah. There are some people that are a lot dense, and they really need a bigger two-by-four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Well, let's carry that thought on. I mean, because she was listening to herself, but she didn't give herself permission or didn't believe enough in, in the, you know, the guardian angel or whatever you want to call it that says, hey, I need to get out of this relationship because it's not working. She knew it, but she wasn't listening. We all know it. We all yes. know the answer, and we choose to say, eh, maybe I'm going to do it my way. way. You know, I'm going to do it my way. My dad has high blood pressure. The doctor said, you know, you need to go on a diet. He knows he needs to lose weight. He knows he needs to eat right. Does he? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and it's and that's, his choice. And that's someone who chooses not to listen. That's right. And, you know, that's, that's, that's how do our choices affect us physically. That's one of the other questions you wanted me to ask. So we're already answering that mm -hmm. because that's how our choices affect us physically. That is. You know, but, you know. More importantly, our choices, too, on an intuitive level, um, if, if we're not listening, um, they affect us, too, in, in, a, in a very same and also dissimilar way, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, it's like, you know, and I'm the same way. You know, I, I, I really don't eat too bad. I don't eat too poorly. I eat, try to eat really good food. But I have this one thing that I have to have uh, one Coke a day. Mm -hmm. And I know I shouldn't drink it because it's not good for me. And I don't feel good. In any, every day I drink it, I don't feel good after I drink it. But do I stop? Absolutely not. I keep saying to myself, well, it's only one. Yeah. So I do the go. same thing, so I don't feel bad. No no guilt from here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my perfect world. <laughs> you know, but it even goes into, you know, things in the personality. I mean, if there's someone that is very shy, you know, and I'm going to use that as an example, it's like, so something happens and... 
they know they need to say something to somebody. They need to stand up for themselves. They need to say, excuse me, can I have my paper back? I mean, you know, whatever the communication is, it's like when they don't communicate, they're choosing to not allow the energy to flow. I mean, because it's all about that give and take of energy because it moves in, it moves out. And if that if they're shy, it's like they are inhibiting the movement of energy. And that energy will sit in their fifth chakra. Hang on, and we're going to be right back with more of Dr. Rita Louise. Just a minute. Hi, this is Rebecca. Don't forget to visit my website. There you will find all the latest Journeys news, upcoming guests, and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Have you ever had a reading and walked away wondering if you learned anything or been told to return time and again to resolve your problems? Seems like just anyone these days claims to be psychic. Rebecca Jernigan has been a professional psychic for over 15 years. She is certified by the American Association of Professional Psychics. Her growth continues and she hosts a radio show, is the author of Tarot, Meditation, and others. Discover your answers from a truly gifted and professional intuitive, Rebecca Jernigan. Call for your appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Or log on to her website at www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Find out where your life's journey will lead you. Hi, this is Rebecca, Journeys with Rebecca. Organic health and beauty. The name says it all. The finest health and beauty products on the planet. They're completely free of animal, synthetic, and petroleum ingredients. Fabulous guarantee. If you don't absolutely love it, get your money back, no questions asked. So log on to journeyswithrebecca.com and click on the Organic Health and Beauty link. Fate Magazine is dedicated to the scientific method, to calm analysis of the known and the unknown. It is a magazine for the logical man, the religious man, for the doubtful man, for the observing man, and above all, for the man who wants to know the answers to those greatest of all questions. Why was I born? Where am I going? Who and what am I? You might call Fate a cosmic reporter. Log on to www.fatemag.com. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. And we're back with Dr. Rita Louise. And Dr. Rita, one of the things, we're going to talk about a couple of things, but, you know, I kind of wanted to go over something else that I, I, don't, I would like to touch base on just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more information for everyone is about how our thoughts and emotions affect our health. I, I kind of want to give an example. If somebody is sitting, um, well, gosh, there could be so many examples. Um, let's say you are sitting in a meeting, um, you're at work and you're sitting in a meeting, and somebody is talking about something that is very abhorrent to you, whether it makes you angry, it makes you sick to your stomach, or, you know, it's just it's just an awful thing. Um, people need to realize that when they sit there and they hold that stuff in, that there, there will be a physical reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether the blood pressure goes up, um, whether they well, literally like get sick, sick to, to their stomach, stomach um, they become, you know, the anger or the outrage or whatever it is can certainly affect us. So, you know, everybody has thoughts. But, you know, we all have thoughts, and sometimes those thoughts are associated with emotion. And those are healthy as long as we don't hang on to them, as long as we vent them um, in an appropriate manner. So, I, I you know, there, there's so many things that people can do, and we're going we're gonna to kind of tie that in at the end of the show on some of the things that we can do to kind of compensate for those moments in our days when, when things do get out of kilter, they do get out of whack, um, so that we can live our lives a little better, we can be a little bit more conscious of how our body's reacting to our environment and to our own thoughts and our own actions. So let's, let's I'd like back to your book one. because on the book we also taught, uh, there's something that I really would like for you to share with the audience because it's a subject that I just dearly love. It's about the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. And you put a lot of that information here in your book. And I would like for you maybe just to kind of start chatting about that and, and, and how the Kabbalah has influenced your, this particular book. Okay. In whatever way you want to do that. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just wing it. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> Unrehearsed question for you. Um, I mean, for those that aren't familiar, the Kabbalah is the basis of Jewish mysticism, and its main symbol is the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life is made up of what are called sephra, and there are ten sephra that form this pattern um, and are connected by paths, and you would definitely need a visual. Right? It's too hard to explain. Anyway, yes, there is a direct relationship between the Kabbalah and the chakra system. 
And one of the things that, okay, when you sit there and interact with the chakra system, it talks about things from a very experiential perspective. It has a very feminine, you know, I mean, you sit there and you talk to people about clairvoyance and they don't understand what clairvoyance is until they've had a clairvoyant experience. Where the Kabbalah is definitely more, and I'm going to say male-oriented, it is very linear in its explanation. And so, you know, one of the things I like to make an example, in the Kabbalah there are seven levels, and on certain, which correlate with the seven levels of the chakras. And so if you sit there, for example, going from the bottom where the first chakra would be, where the third chakra is, instead of just having the one circle in the center, there are actually two circles that are balanced over that center line, you know, and one side male and one side female. Now, the third chakra has to do with power. It's about how we use our power, how we interact with people on power levels, and how we use our power for ourselves. But from a Kabbalistic perspective, they actually define the power much more specifically. On the female side, it's the power of passion. It's our ability to use our energy without limitation. And so someone that is working on a piece of art or if you're sitting there and you're reading a good book and you just get all involved in it, it's like and you look up and it's like, oh, my God, five hours have gone by. That's the power of that energy on the female side. When you get over on its diametric opposite, I mean, because instead of being circular yin-yang kind of thing, we're actually looking at polarity which is one of the things I love because you're not having to sit there and figure out which is the black and the white and the white and the black. and uh, You know, it's just like it's either this or this or you fall somewhere else in between. And so on the total opposite end is the power of the will. And it's about using the intellect to say, I need to do this. I have to do this. I should do this. You know, it's not really about wanting. And when I give examples of that, you know, the things that come to mind for me are, Balancing my checkbook, cleaning my bathroom, <laughs> taking out garbage, you know, basically anything that has to do with cleaning right. is on that list. It's uh, like no passion, a lot of will. Yeah. And so when we're balanced, there is a balance in our life between doing the things we have to do and doing the things that give us excitement. Kind of interesting, slightly different way of looking at the third chakra, don't you think? I like that. I actually, I actually um, can wrap my mind around that. That's and why I, I love about the Kabbalah. Because you can sit there and go, okay, I can dig that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can relate. I understand and it makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. But you know, how many times have you heard many, many people all the time say you must bring balance in life? That's just exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. That's, that's how it's achieved. We, you know, we have, there's things that we have to do, such as cleaning. And most people don't have a passion for that, although there are some that there do. There are some. There are some. And and then there is the, I'm, I have to play softball, or I have to watch sports on TV, or I have to be involved in, um, you know, uh, helping children. Whatever the case is, is there's a passion to everyone. Mm-hmm. And some people have more than one passion. And it's just finding the balance so that it makes the part of the life that isn't quite so fun more fun, because it allows you to be able to do those things. And what's Usually. interesting is that people that are diagnosed as being depressed live their life on the side of the willpower. And if you ask them, they have no passion in their life. And many times they're doing things that they really don't want to be doing. They're in jobs that they really didn't pick for themselves. But, you know, well, I can't become a musician because it doesn't pay any money. So I'm going to get a job as a computer technician. And they make themselves go to work every day. But what they really want to do is play music. Yes. That's the passion. I know. And then they wonder why they're depressed. I know. And, you know, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all get paid for our passions, right? Hang on. We'll be right back with more of Dr. Rita Louise. Talk with an intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and we are here with Dr. Rita Louise. Dr. Rita, we have covered an awful lot of ground tonight, but before we go any further, um, I will, first of all, I'd like to let you have uh, let everyone know where they can get a hold of your book, your website, all that information, because then you have some information you're going to leave the audience with tonight 
which is um, what we all can do to live a more healthy, more harmonious, and balanced life. So I'm going to let you go for it. Okay. Um, people can get copies of my book from my webpage, which is www.soulhealer.com. That's S-O-U-L-H-E-A-L-E-R.com. Um, there's also information about me and the work that I do. Um, I hope this is okay to, to say, but I'm offering, I, I'm a medical intuitive, which we never really mentioned on the air, um, and I'm offering, which I don't even think you know about, Ms. Rebecca, I'm now teaching medical intuition training courses. Well, no, I did not know that. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I just figured I would mention that too, but all that information is available on uh, www.soulhealer.com. Okay, now before I let you go on, I also want to let everyone know that if they didn't get that, then go to my website, then go into the guest pages, and you will be in the guest page, Dr. Rita Louise, and your link to your website will always be active on mine. Perfect. So if they didn't write it down, they can still get to you. Perfect. So how can we leave a better life, lead a better life? Boy, I can almost talk tonight. <laughs> I mean, I think the most important thing, and we've kind of talked about this, you know, in different ways, but I want to just come back to it again, is to just start listening. You know, and part of listening is, and this is a, a new word, or it's a word that I brought into my vocabulary since writing this book, is the word surrender. You know, and most people sit there and they're like, well, what's that? You know, but surrender is just really about listening and doing what you need to do and listening to what spirit is guiding you to. All right, do. let me let me cut in real, real, real quick. Okay. The word surrender to many people means to give in uh, without... Um, w- Without any, um, oh, what's the word I want to use? Like all your free will is taken away. And it's actually the opposite effect when we surrender. What when I we... have found, and I'm coming from a very personal place, and if we had time, I could tell you story on top of a story <laughs> about me personally getting the Cosmic 2 by 4 until my butt got kicked enough so that I learned to surrender. You know, but it's really about doing stuff. And sometimes what spirit wants you to do isn't very fun. I mean... In the introduction to the book, I talk about um, writing the book and my dog passing. And it was the hardest thing. My dog was very clear to me that she wanted to experience the death process, very clear. And I did not know that she was going to basically have four or five seizures before she went unconscious. And it was the most difficult thing I have ever done in my entire life. But I was guided to do that. You know, and the easy way out would have been, you know, take her to the vet, put her out. But that wasn't the right thing to do. It just wasn't the right thing to do. And to me, that is what surrendering is about, is doing what's the right thing. You know, and listening, if you say to yourself, is this what I'm supposed to do? What am I supposed to do today? What am I supposed to eat today? And ask internally, you know, kind of me, 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 even though that does sound kind of egotistical. Um, It's not. Because spirit will always tell you, you know, you need to drink some water. You need to go exercise. And if you ask and they give you the same answer over and over and over again, that's usually a pretty good sign that it's spirit and it's not you doing it. The conscious mind will usually have a thought that flies in and flies out. And this is <laughs> this is the Dr. Rita rule of patented spirit listening. If you ask spirit a question and you ask it the same question the next day and you ask the same question the next day and if they're giving you the same answer for a week, it's spirit. Now, you can be like me and wait three years to finally listen, or you can wait until, you know, you get cancer or diabetes or whatever and get the two-by-four because when you don't listen, that's what happens. That is the natural result, and that's kind of where karma comes from, from the not listening. I would have to agree 150% with everything you just said, and I agree with that. So listen, everybody. Yeah. Well, and listen with an open mind. Mm-hmm. You know, we all have these thought processes, and I think you'll agree that we need to live our life a certain way or be a certain way because that's the way it's been done or that's the way everybody else does it or whatever. You know, it's that programming. I call it the environmental programming. Mm-hmm. But that's not being true to the self. And a lot of people have a huge conflict with being true to their self and, and, and doing what, what, what they think everybody else is doing because they'll fit in or they'll be accepted or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And that's from fear, and that goes that's a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but ultimately, you know, we about that. You know, but ultimately, if they don't sit there and face up to it, they'll get the two by four, and either they'll get it in this lifetime or they'll get it in the next. And it's, it's about just, the evolution of the soul. Say that again. You know, it's about the evolution of the soul. Right. If we don't get it in one, we'll have to 
figure it out in another one. I mean, because there are some people that, you know, they think they live, a, you know, you, you look at them, you think they live a blessed life, but they're really like evil people. <laughs> you it's know, like, okay, they might not be getting theirs now, but they will get it eventually. Yes, exactly. Well, I have to tell you that your book has been um, one of the most refreshing books that I've read recently. Thank uh, you. Just because of the fact it had so much wonderful information in it. It has so many, uh, you know, the, just the whole way that it flows is so helpful. And even for those who already know this and who may already be part of what we would call a more of a metaphysical mindset, it still brings you back and, and makes you go, oh, you know what, I need to work on that again. Because we, like everyone else, get busy doing things and we forget to take care of self. Mm-hmm. And self is about taking care of the spirit of who we are as well. Exactly. So your book is just fabulous for that, Dr. Reed. I cannot tell you um, how, how really enjoyable it was for me to read that. Thank you. And I know for all your... All the listeners out there, anybody that would, you know, purchase one of your books, that there's certainly, it's one of those things, too, that it's one of those books that you can give to somebody else when you're done with it. It's like one of those right timing things. I think your, your, your book is one of those that you give to somebody else as a gift that keeps on giving, not just for the person that's purchased it for themselves. So, you know, oops. oh, Dr. Rita, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discovery. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night.